we, we, we connected possibly Greenland melting with this cold blob in the North Atlantic. And at the, the same time that the, the, the surface air temperatures are at record high, the sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic are at record low. And it's a very conspicuous feature of the global temperature map. Why is there this cold blob? And what we know is, is that there, there is a capacity for some recirculation of accumulated meltwater to come from Greenland melting. And then that, that cold pool can strengthen storms when the, the, the sea temperatures to the south are normal. So if you have normally warm temperatures here and then abnormally cold here, this can strengthen storms. So the fact that Iceland had a terrible storm just three days ago, the fact that the UK um, two days before that had a terrible storm, record-setting storms, it's part of a pattern that, that could well be linked with this cold pool, um, this so-called cold blob in the North Atlantic. And the science is starting to come out on that topic that, that it appears that, that this, this cold, cold blob is producing stronger storms and that Greenland melting may be part of that. And so Greenland's got its impacts on sea level, uh, in, um, this cold blob, and also changing nutrient supply to, to the surrounding oceans, which could affect fisheries. We don't know if it's a positive or a negative for fisheries, but there, there's more sedimentation coming out of the Greenland ice sheet. Does it change the salinity of the water? Does that have any effect? The surface salinity in the North Atlantic is, is, is lower. The salty warm water that's coming up as part of the, the Gulf Stream, Antarctica, expanding sea ice. Um, and, and also, because Antarctica is losing, is a net loser of ice, yes. that has the potential in, to freshen the surface layers of the waters around Antarctica as well. And that can cap the radiative cooling of the southern oceans and then therefore produce an accumulation of heat um, in the vicinity of the Antarctic ice sheet. So if that increasing warm pool that's, that's being capped by this freshwater layer in the southern oceans, if that, it, that is threatening to e erode the Antarctic ice sheet, um, that's an example of, of a, a feedback mechanism that's, that's not in the climate models that could uh, lead to a faster loss of the Antarctic ice sheet and that's the big one, right? That's the one that's going to produce a lot more sea level rise than, than Greenland's going to. And it's pretty global. I mean, we tend to think of things being northern hemisphere, mid latitude, southern hemisphere, but you're talking about a pretty global. Yeah, it's really important for us to, you know, like I'm a kind of a Greenlandist, but um, Antarctica matters more if it takes over. Uh, Greenland's been pr providing more, more than a factor of two to sea level than Antarctica the last 20 years. Um, but Antarctica has the capacity to take over. I suppose it will in the coming decades. And then Antarctica has the potential to overwhelm uh, sea level rise uh, just because it's like nine times the volume of Greenland. And this mechanism of, of freshwater capping the southern oceans, radiative cooling, accumulation of heat in the vicinity of the Antarctic is concerning to me. Greenland is your laboratory. Are you sort of learning and sharing with all the guys working down here? Is there a lot of discussion? Or yeah. Are you looking at each other? Yeah, I, you know, Greenland's a good laboratory for surface melt processes. You don't have a lot of surface melting in Antarctica, so the, the work that I'm focusing on it isn't so relevant for Antarctica. But I know enough about oceanography to 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 just understand the, this this heat balance issue in the southern oceans uh, if the surface waters are being capped by fresh water and shutting off that that normal uh, heat release by radiation to space uh, that's that's a big deal uh, if that's that's happening when you're talking about the general temperature of the planet rising which is causing more melt the melts on the surface but the dynamics of the ice sheet, as, as I've read, is that it, there's a lot going on inside the ice sheet. It's not all on the surface. So. It's interesting to follow the water as it is produced on the surface or even arrives at the surface in the form of rainfall. In, in some heavy rain instances, uh, the water drains down in. And being a, at a higher temperature than the ice itself, it, water, whether it's meltwater or rainwater, has the capacity to heat the ice internally and warmer ice is softer, flows faster. Uh, the water then continues to the bed where it's either stored or transmitted and um, under some conditions can lubricate flow. 
during heavy rain, uh, you can get um, accelerated flow. Yeah. That, that can provide some gliding effect. Uh, then the, the water um, comes out the front, and if, if that's in a marine environment, it forces a heat exchange between ocean waters, and if that's deep enough, below about 350 meters, that can uh, be a much more efficient way to transfer heat from this relatively warm uh, Atlantic water layer and that if it, this is only important for the deepest the thickest glaciers and that um, is eroding ice at the grounding line so that's important uh, connection between surface melting uh, flow through the ice and then a, a forced heat exchange at uh, underwater at the deepest glacier fronts uh, and that's a destabilizing effect there but obviously, I mean, it's so vast, the Greenland ice sheet. Is, is this something that is causing enormous concern or is it just something you're monitoring? Or If climate continues warming, a number of processes start to multiply. Yeah. And uh, that's increasing snow line. That's uh, exposing a, a, a larger area of darkness. Uh, the bare ice area is darker than the snow cover. So uh, another is a, a longer season of, of um, that, that ice algae can colonize and grow and get darker. Yeah. Um, there's more liquid water in a warming climate on the surface of the ice, uh, lakes forming higher. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, possi the possible factor of, of wildfire, and we, we think that wildfire is increasing with climate warming. Yeah. It's, it's, um, the numbers are, are pretty noisy, so it's hard to say that for sure, for sure. Yeah. But we think that wildfires increasing with, with climate warming. We are seeing a lot of wildfires all over the, the planet. Yeah. yeah, so the question is, are they, is that increasing? Yeah. There is some evidence in North America of an increase in wildfire. Yeah. And um, so then connecting that with, with uh, Greenland ice, we, we need better measurements of of black carbon. We need more measurements. So you need more resources? Or... Yeah, yeah. We've made a handful of, of black carbon measurements. Uh, it's not enough to be conclusive. Um, but what, what, we, what I feel confident about is that uh, black carbon can, um, well, it, it does provide heating of snow, snow and ice surfaces. And that can, all else equal, give an earlier melt on set. Yeah. Okay. And expand the melt season that way. Part of this this whole conference is to find a political solution to climate change in many respects. The climate science is the sort of the underlying basis for the change, the threats and the risk. In the work that you're doing, are there risks that you think are relevant to, to what we're trying to stave off in terms of like a fully destabilized ice sheet? The Greenland ice sheet is is like any land ice mass is it's a threshold system and in the current climate uh, Greenland is beyond its thresholds um, it however is is not losing ice catastrophically it, it, uh, we're about plus 1.2 Celsius above uh, pre-industrial temperatures in summer for Greenland the uh, threshold of viability has the best guess has been put at 1.6 uh, 1.65 uh, Celsius, but it's really just, it's, it's just in a zone where it's losing mass. And that's been confirmed with multiple independent lines of, of, of measurements. Uh, the real point is how far beyond that threshold do we push this ice sheet? Do we push it to a two degree, a four degree summer warming? And the, the two scenarios, the business as usual scenario, We'll have Greenland warming in summer and end of century by about six Celsius, um, and at, at that, at that, the business as usual scenario. And then the the kind of the c carbon mitigation scenario um, is about half as much, so it's about three Celsius in summer, and it's double the threshold. yeah, it's it's well, we're already above its threshold, but it's not losing ice super fast. Okay. It's, it's losing about 300 gigatons, which is about just under a millimeter per year. So if that just kept up linearly, it doesn't add up to this much was, at all. This was the next point. Right? 
you were talking earlier about the insides of the ice being changed. And it does, can that create a non-linear effect? Yeah, there must be non-linear effects. And we, we actually see um, the, the shape of the ice loss appears to be non-linear. What's really important, though, is, is really, if, if we could simplify it as much as just looking at temperature. Um, as temperature rises, the rate um, increases probably non-linearly. So if, if we have a climate change scenario with a plus three Celsius summer temperature in Greenland, um, that's much lower than uh, in, a, in a carbon regulation scenario than the business as usual scenario. In other words, mitigation matters. Is there this threshold that you can go past it and the mechanics of the ice sheet change and it starts to lose mass and therefore we're kind of stuck in this scenario where we're going to get the sea level rise? Um, there, one point, is the, the key irreversibility for Greenland it has to do with uh, its elevation and if a dynamic thinning can produce enough drawdown of the surface elevation uh, to warmer parts of the atmosphere. So if there's enough slumping, um, then we cannot recover without cooling several degrees. But where we are today, we're not beyond that threshold. We're, we're not at the point of irreversibility. We're, we're, we're moving in that direction. And even in an optimistic climate mitigation scenario, we're, 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 we're still moving in that direction. So it's alarming, and, and, and I think the message for decision makers should be that we need to uh, get down, um, stay down below two degrees, yeah. uh, say below or one and a half, um, and I think more importantly, um, devise technologies to remove carbon from the atmosphere. Draw